there's a fish. There's a real nice fish. Yes! Whoa! Well, didn't this turn into a jigging video really quick? G'day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. I'm out on a solo adventure today. Uh, it's one of those ones where you go, go hard or go home. I'm currently a long way off Cape Morton and I'm going to try and catch a solo yellow fin. Now you would have seen some of the previous yellow fin videos I did with Shawno. Uh, it's one of those things where you might hook a, a 10 kilo one, you might hook an 80 kilo one. So. If I do manage to get a hook up, there's going to be a bit of drama involved, but hey, why not inject a little bit of stress into your life? It's a pretty reasonable day, got about 8 to 10 knot easterly, so once I get out here, be able to get blown home when it's time to call it a day, but I'm going for pretty well anything today. I'll take a big dolphin fish, a tuna. Um, look, I don't particularly want to see a blue marlin because I've only got my light tackle gear. I don't have really any heavy tackle stuff, so a blue marlin might make my day very, very interesting. I just want to see some action. I've got, it's seven o'clock now. Had a bit of a sleep in because uh, I was a bit tired, but seven o'clock, I'm out here fishing, giving it a red hot nudge. Hopefully one of these reels screams off. Thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. Righto guys, before we get stuck into the fishing, I quickly wanted to touch on something that's very, very important. Now, Christmas holidays, this is the time of the year when everyone dusts the boat off and gets out for a fish. Uh, but, it can also be the time of the year that a lot of things go wrong with trailers that have been left for a long time sitting. So I've got Neil here from Goodyear Auto Care. He looks after my car and trailer and he's going to run through some of the things that we should be looking out for. Hey Sammy, how you been? Very well mate, excellent, very excellent. well. Great to hear. And you'll be getting out fishing as well. Mate, looking forward to it. Excellent. Looking forward to it. So we're going to start at the front of the trailer and work our way down. All the things you should be checking before you hit the highway. I would start with the brakes and the hitch here. Make sure there's plenty of grease around the hitch area here. It's in here. Um, this is the, the, the braking mechanism, the hand braking mechanism. We're going to make sure it doesn't max out on us. Okay, because this is where our cable goes. So we want to make sure that this works and is free. Semi's trailer has uh, brakes on the front axle only, so listen for noises, unusual noises. So when you're backing down the boat ramp, turn your radio off, wind your window down. If you hear an unusual grinding, groaning noise coming from your wheels, maybe get a mate to have a quick look at it. If you're unsure, bring it to your mechanic because these are the things that stop you when you're travelling down the road. The next part of the, 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 the service is we're going to check out your winch. We're going to make sure there's no um, damage or twisting in the winch rope, or in this case it's a, a strap. Make sure your winch moves nicely. Uh, spray with a bit of WD if need be. Moving on to the spare tire there next, guys. Um, we're going to have a look at this. It's probably one of the most overlooked things in your trailer. It is a spare tire. A lot of trailers don't have them, but if you do have it, make sure there's no cracking in the sidewall. Uh, make sure there's tire pressure. Make sure there's pressure in the tire. Okay, moving back to your axles now. And the biggest thing in a trailer that lets people down is wheel bearings. Okay, these things are in and out of the water all the time. Water and grease don't work real good together. So what we're going to do is do a quick bearing check. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the top of the wheel and I'm, I'm being pretty pretty um, tough here. I'm giving that a wriggle. In this case here in Sammy's trail, there's no movement in that bearing. So that bearing is in good condition. Check this one real quick. Again, no movement, everything there is good. If I was concerned and if I was doing a full service, I'd pop the cap off here, have a look at the grease um, condition. We're also going to look at our tyres here. Again, we're going to look at those sidewalls, make sure there's no cracking going around the sidewalls here. And we're going to run about 40 to 50 PSI in a trailer like this. We've moved down to the rear of the trailer. We're going to have a look at the lights. So get your missus or your mates in the, in the, in the car. Make sure all your lights work here. Semi has a modern LED style system on his trailer. If these don't work, they're not as simple as the changing a bulb, so you'd need to take it to your mechanic. Otherwise, if it's the old school style with the screw lenses, um, you can change the bulbs out yourself. And lastly, we're going to look at chassis and suspension and axles. So we'll just quickly roll underneath the trailer and have a look that there's no cracks or rust holes or anything in the chassis rails, uh, cross members. And then we're going to have a quick look at the axles, make sure they're not pitted or overly rusted. They are going to show a little bit of rust. And then the springs and the spring bushes. Um, we'll get a lever in those spring bushes, make sure there's no excess movement there. And again, we're talking rust. Rust is going to happen because we're in and out of salt water, but as long as it's not excessive, we should be okay. There you go, guys. There's some things to check before you hit the highway because I'd hate to be driving past you on the way to the ramp. I don't want to do it, but trust me, I will. Now, 
If you do need some trailer maintenance, Neil has a special deal for you guys. Might take it away. Thanks, mate. Now, I own four stores on the north side of Brisbane, so if you go to one of these stores, uh, I'm going to do a special deal till the end of summer, uh, where if you have a single axle trailer, so it's $100 per axle. So if you have a single axle trailer, we'll do a service which includes repacking your wheel bearings for $100. If you have a dual axle trailer, it's $200. So, thanks, Tim. Not a drama all, mate. Guys, if you don't have time to do it yourself, Bring it in to Neil, he'll get it done for you and you'll spend more time fishing, I can guarantee you that. Now, speaking of fishing, back to it. I'm just in at 150 metres and I'm heading east for the, the shelf to chase these tuna. I thought while well, I'm out here, I may as well chuck the uh, spread of lures in now. I've got a spread of skirts at the moment. I may as well chuck those straight in and see if I can't cross paths with a dolphin fish or something cool on the way out. Um, I'll be travelling about five or six k's faster if I wasn't trolling, so I thought, why not get the lures in, start fishing. You never know what you might come across. Now this is where it starts to get a little bit interesting. No love on the skirts, unfortunately. Thought I might have had a shot at a dolly or something on the way out, not to be. But I'm off the shelf, I'm in about 400 metres of water at the moment. It's time to put the tuna lures out. Well, I don't get much further back than that. Next time we see that, fingers crossed, the tuna's hanging off it. Righto. Bib, it can go out as well. Got a skirt as well, and I'll put that longish, but it'll be the dolly, or, and I don't want, particularly want it to happen, but if a blue comes up, it, it can eat this one. All right, the trap is set. Time to move up to cruising altitude and uh, see if we can't run over one. Oi, Jono, I just went, I'm going past a sunfish at the moment. Epic. That's awesome. Never seen one of them before. Well, guys, update the captain's log. Um, been trolling around for a couple of hours now. Haven't really seen much life. The weather's actually got even better, so that's a big thumbs up as well. Uh, we just need one of these reels to go off and just... That would be fantastic. If we could do it now, while I'm saying this part as well, that'd be great. Just, you know, a bit more drama, cameras rolling, you know. But I'm not fussy. I'm happy for it to happen any time today. Generally out here, if a reel goes off, it's, uh, it's going to be good. That's why you fish almost all day for just one crack at the title, so we're just hoping we get our shot today. Well guys, tuna suck. They're hard to catch. So I thought I'd break it up with a bit of a, a deep jiggy jig. Haven't done a deep jig in a while. There doesn't seem to be a great deal of current. So why not? Go on. Well, I've got something on here. It's heavy. It's not doing much at all. This fight is not far off that of a ball sack. There's some colour. Ooh. It's a long fin big eye. Tasty sashimi. Drop number one. You're not being very photogenic. Drop number one. Rewarded with some tasty, tasty sashimi. Beats donutting on tuna, that's for sure. It's a long fin big eye. Uh, very, very good eating. I think might have another drop. We're on the bottom. There's a good fish. There's a real nice fish. Come on. Gotta try and get this guy off the bottom. Shh. 
short pumps every little bit counts oh it's powerful oh I feel like I got him up off the bottom though Although he, he's still going. A lot of weight there. This fight's been going on for about five minutes now. This guy's still, still hanging in there. Oh. Arm's starting to get sore. Just keeping constant pressure. Keep those hooks in place. Every wind you get, he gets close to the surface. Of course, in true Sammy style, guys, my head camera died and my back camera's mic wasn't working correctly. So, we've got no audio. But fear not, I'm going to voice over the rest of the fight for you. This is a moment when I just talked it up being a massive big barcod for the whole fight and I've just seen that it's a big old kingfish. Um, 220 metres pulling a kingfish up sideways. Not great fun. Cheeky little tail grab, reef it in and complain about it being a kingfish not a barcod. Hold it up, more complaining about it being a kingfish not a barcod. Saying still good fun and just generally ranting and raving about the fish like I usually do. Probably saying something along the lines of I hope there's no more kingfish down there. My arms are sore. Anyway, I'll fix the audio after this. On with the show. Well, didn't this turn into a jigging video really quick? Two drops, two hookups, two fish. What tuna? Don't even know what you're talking about. I'm gonna persist with this a little longer and um, might even have a, uh, a troll for a mahi-mahi slash black marlin bit later on we're on the bottom oh there's a fish this kind of feels a bit kingish Kind of feels like another kingy. Yeah, look at those, look at those tail beats. Might have found kingfish heaven here. Righto, mate. Get your line and length. Up you come, thanks. Just gonna get right up this one. Although he feels like he's hooked in the mouth, not in the side, so he's, I can see how I'm gaining line on him pretty easy. That's what you want. Hooked in the bottom or the top hook in the mouth so you can lead their head rather than pull them up sideways with a stack of weight like I did last time. And once you get them coming, just lay into them. I reckon this fight's gonna take half the time, if that, a quarter of the time. It's just like walking the dog now. Once he gets within view, we'll crack the crack our tanty again. I was paying a dollar ten, but we got confirmation. Another kingy. Similar size fish, I might try and get him out without bringing him into the boat. Got to watch these assists. See, you, mate. Whew. Who needs the gym? Who needs the gym? Whew. Anything but a kingfish would be lovely. What 
do I get the feeling that that's a kingfish? That feels very much like a kingfish. This is kingfish heaven. I'll be changing jig, I think. Something maybe that doesn't fall as fast. Maybe a squid looking thing. See if I can get away from these kings. They are awesome fun, there's no doubt about that. It's just really hard work. Rightio. On a scale of one to kingfish, how kingfish is it? Already know the answer. It is full kingfish. Absolutely full kingfish. Oh, bit better one. Is it? No, not really. Chill, mate, chill. Come on, yes. See you, mate. Whew. I just want a reefy. Whew. That's three kingfish and three drops from 220 metres of water. That's hard work. That's real hard work. Time for a jig change. Nice squiddy looking number. Just gonna get that down the bottom. And just teabag it nice and slowly. Try not to excite anything that's got a yellow tail. Oh. I get the feeling I know what this is. Oh yeah. Yep, I reckon I, I reckon I know what this is. Oh dearie me. Dearie me. <clears throat> Ooh. The consolation prize being that my neighbour, Chef Julian, the notorious well, he told me, he's like, next time you get a kingy, let me know. I've got to show you something real cool. And when Chef Julian says he wants to show you something cool, you know it's going to be pretty epic. So we've got one in the bag. Uh, we only need the one. Oh, it's a kingy. Well, I'll be. I did not see that come. That's a fair old kingy too. That's um, that's well and truly a meter, meter plus a kingfish. That's that's why they're pulling hard. One hook. Two hook. See you, mate. Whoo! <sighs> I might have one more crack at the uh, yellow fin. Just do a quick rip out deep again. Then I'll chuck the skirts on and um, I think I'll jig my way. Oh, jig my way. I'll um, troll my way back to civilization. Might stop at a few. Spots in shallower as well. See if I can um, pick up a snapper or a pearly on the jig while I'm at it Change of plan. I checked the time. It's two o'clock. I thought I should probably just start heading back. It's a fair trek and um, Look I've I've uh, been very lucky with the weather. It is meant to kick up at some stage I don't know when so it was meant to kick up about two o'clock but it's still fine so I thought I better not push it if I go out there I'm still solo I'll, uh, I'll do the right thing and I'll, um, I'll head in a bit closer hopefully find a little black marlin I did hear on the radio there's a few getting caught 
not not big numbers, but hey, you got to be in it to win it. All it takes is one in the right spot, and uh, and you can nab them. So, fingers crossed. Even a dolly, I'll be very happy with a dolly. Actually, very very happy. So, we'll see what we can uh, turn up. Well, <coughs> trolling is being consistent with not catching anything at the moment. So, I've got the uh, I've swapped out to a lighter jig. I mean, a um. A closer in spot hopefully can find a, uh, a pearly or a snapper or something like that um, I'd love to be greedy and not get a kingfish I don't know if my arms could take another one but a nice a nice big pearly and I think we'll just about call it a win There we go. Oh, that's a nice. Got a bit of weight, that. That's a nice fish. This could be. This could be what we're chasing. I want to count my chickens early. I've got colour. <laughs> Snap a dab a do. No one's going to complain about that guy. Woo! Here's a little chunk. Well, I think this is a fantastic decision to, uh, to jig on the way back in kingies and now this guy and there you go hit the nail on the head that time nice knobby i was hoping for a big pearly but definitely not going to say no to this guy what a cracking fish he can come home with us i think and uh i think we should do another drift might be a bit of a jigging day bugger the trolling jig on well that worked pretty well definitely going to uh Try that again. Makes me wonder why I wasted my time trolling all this time. I should have um, just gone straight to jigging. Could have been home by nine o'clock. Instead, we've made a whole day of it. That's okay. Yep. Oh, it's only a, only a little one, I think. Still, action's fast and furious on the jig. Might not be that small. A few head nods might be another little snapper. How good am I on the calls? Oh, it's a pearl. Oh, I'm gonna call all of them snapper now. How well is it hooked? Oh, pretty well. Yes! Yes! Textbook hookup. Top joy, he was going absolutely nowhere. But that guy, uh, unfortunately, he has a date with dinner. A couple more of his mates would be lovely, I'd say. That'd be absolutely fantastic. I'll tell you what, we have wasted our day trolling, that is for sure. The jigging is on fire. The Arvo session on the jig has saved the day from donuts to go nuts. You! Oh, on the drop. Oh! That's a good fish. Oh, some power there. What have we got here? This might be a big snap. 
that looks very snappish to me. You little ripper. Tell you what, I reckon this guy would be a good candidate for a release. One. Two. Go down, son. Go, go, go. All right. Yes. Successful release. I got plenty for a feed. I won't be able to say no to one big pearly, but a little snappy. Or he, he's got it. one is free to me. He has. Well, guys, that is all she wrote. I'm gonna head home. It's uh, been a long, long day in the water. Well worth the wait. Probably could have done without the uh, hours and hours spent trolling for nada, jigging. Fantastic. I gotta get home. Probably won't do. Probably won't be doing the filleting up today because it's gonna be dark by the time I get home. We'll fill it up tomorrow. And if we have time in this video, might even get Chef Julian up to see if we can't do something cool with that kingfish. But uh, yeah. Successful day all around, had to work for it. That's what keeps us coming back. I've got some K's to cover. We did it. We got some fish in the end. Well, that was some good old fashioned fun out in the boat. Jigs, they saved the day. Um, I'll tell you what, if I didn't pack the jigging rod and chuck in a box of jigs, I reckon it would have been a big old fashioned donut session. And nobody likes that, so jigs saved the day. Now, I'm not going to show you any filleting of these. I'll give you a quick run through of the fish we caught, but I'm not going to show you any filleting this time because I'm going to try and twist Chef Julian's arm from next door and get him to show us something cool with the kingfish. So, fingers crossed he's uh, available and he can show us some of his mastery. But check out what we caught. So, that kingy there, that's a nice fish. It's about 95, 96 centimetres. We've got the long fin big eye or bullseye. I can't remember which one it is. 40 centimetre pearly and snappy, just shy of uh, 70 centimetres, about 68, 67 centimetres. So, some really nice fish there. I'll tell you what, all these things have in common is they are fantastic table fish. So, I'm going to be eating like a king. I'm pretty stoked about that. But, got a bit of filleting to do. And uh, next time you see me, we'll do a tackle talk and possibly a cook up. So, uh, make sure you stay tuned. Okay guys, tackle talk time. Now I'm not going to touch on any of the trolling gear. Uh, it did not work, so we'll go through it in another episode. What we will talk about though is the jigging. The jigging was fantastic as you saw. Um, I used these three jigs. This is a 320 gram knife style jig. This is a 300 gram, uh, this is a Savage Gear jig squid. Um, I like the dangly bits. They always seem to attract the nibbles. And then in the shallower stuff with the snapper and the pearlies, I used 120 gram uh, Savage Gear Jig Squid. Uh, you guys would see me use this one a fair bit when I'm chasing snapper and pearlies. They seem to love it. I reckon it's the dangly bits. Um, in the water, it just looks really, really tantalizing. Um, I rig, rigged all of mine with top assists that had double assists and these bigger jigs, I just had the one big single assist. That one there, I interchanged between the two. Now the jigging gear I used was a bit of a combination between my deep jigging and shallow jigging. I used my deep jigging reel with a 35 pound braid, 40 pound leader and 80 pound uh, bite leader. And I had that on my shallow jigging rod. Um, the reason for it being, you can get away with using your shallow jigging rod in the deeper stuff, but winding up from the depths with the smaller reel would have been an absolute pain. So I combined the two and it worked out all right. So that reel is an Oshia Jigger 2000 HG and the rod is actually an Oshia Jigger PE3 rod. So just the Oshia Jigger combo there and it worked an absolute treat. Guys, I almost forgot, I had a chat with Chef Julian and he's agreed to come up and show us his awesome kingfish recipe, but I'm gonna make you guys wait for it. I'll be releasing it as its own little cooking video on Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. So this coming Wednesday, 4 p.m., make sure you're tuning in because Chef Julian's gonna work his absolute magic on this fresh bit of kingfish. I cannot wait. I reckon it's gonna be pretty tasty. 
Guys, that brings us to the end of this week's episode. But before I sign it off, I wanted to say a massive shout out to everyone who's purchased shirts and merch in the lead up to Christmas. You guys are absolutely awesome. If you still haven't got your orders in, you better do it quickly because I'm running really low. We've still got some of the slow and deep jigging club shirts and also oh, the fishing for beers. I've still got stock of both styles, but the sizes are getting very, very limited. You're also running out of time if you wanted to buy it as a gift before Christmas. So get your orders in ASAP and I'll get them in the mail and out to you as quick as possible. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If you did like or learn something from this video, make sure you leave us a comment below, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And if you want to find out any more information about Neil's deal from Goodyear Auto Care, you'll find all his contact details in the description below this video. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next week for another Sammy Hitsky Fishing Adventure. Cheers.